Our, our own old. Goodbye. Number five. <laughs> okay. Number five. Good night, man. Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. It's finally here. Health Canada has finally released its new Canada's Food Guide as of about a month ago, and I have a lot to say about it. So today I'm going to walk you through some of the differences and changes we're seeing with the new food guide compared to older versions, what I'm liking and what I'm not liking. So let's do this. Let's talk about some of the differences in the layout of the guide. Number one, goodbye recommended servings. So this recommendation was overdue for an overhaul for so long, I'm really excited to see that it's now being changed up. So in my experience as a dietitian, I found that a lot of people had a lot of trouble with the concept of serving sizes and also meeting some of these recommendations set out by the food guide. So even for myself, for example, with the grains, it was recommended that I'm supposed to have six to seven grain servings every day. That amounts to about three and a half cups of grains every single day. And while some people would have no problem meeting this recommendation just based on their diet or based on that day, I found that once I was getting all the protein servings in and all the, the milk and you know the meat and all the fruits and vegetables, I was stuffed. I was full. I was feeling overwhelmed with the amount of food that the, the guide was recommending for me. So I can definitely see why it can be a bit of a struggle for a lot of people to follow some of these recommended serving sizes. Number two, goodbye food groups. So our old food guide featured this beautiful colorful rainbow with our fruits and vegetables, we had our grains, then we had our milk and alternatives, then our meat and alternatives. So instead of our rainbow, we are now seeing a plate method with some very simple messaging. So we've got some really nice broad categories instead of the food groups. They are fruits and vegetables, protein rich foods, whole grains, and then of course water as our drink of choice. Number three, goodbye a focus on animal based products. Now don't get me wrong, I still totally enjoy meat in moderation, however the past guides have really put animal products as the center point of a balanced meal. In this new guide, there's definitely still room for meat and milk and other animal based foods in our day, however they're really trying to emphasize the need to get more plant based foods into our diet. So here's what I like about the guide. Number one, it emphasizes that healthy eating is more than just the foods that we eat. So it looks like Health Canada has taken a tip out of the Brazilian food guide, which is often what we see as the gold standard in food guides, and has presented Canadians with some actionable tips to combat some of the external triggers that we have when it comes to interfering with our ability to eat healthy. So rather than just focusing on what to eat, the new food guide is trying to focus also on how to eat and is touching on concepts like mindful eating, cooking at home with friends and family, reading and understanding food labels, and understanding food marketing as well. Number two, the emphasis on filling half of your plate with veggies. As a dietitian, this is definitely a message that I've been trying to share for a very long time, and now it's so exciting to see our national guide reflect that message as well. So I think that seeing our vegetables displayed on a plate, like we're seeing now with the new food guide and the plate method, is so much more effective as a communication strategy than trying to encourage people to count out and calculate all of these arbitrary serving sizes. So I definitely think this is a big win on Health Canada's part. And number three, it encourages water for hydration. In an effort to kind of combat all of the sugar sweetened beverages there are on the market, I'm really happy to see that Health Canada is emphasizing the OG in hydration, water. And they're doing that by putting a glass of water front and center on the first page of that guide. Bravo. So here's what I don't like about the guide. First of all, you definitely need to be super tech savvy to get it. So most of the information that is found in the guide is accessible only really online. You have to dig deep to find it. And honestly, I spend my whole life online. This is my whole job. And even I found it really hard to navigate the website and find all the information that I'm looking for. So I can only imagine how frustrating it would be for some of our older Canadians who are maybe a little less tech savvy to find what they're looking for, or maybe as a newcomer to Canada and just getting started. Number two, it might actually be too broad. So one of the big criticisms of the old guide was that it contained a lot of very specific information, all those numbers, and that made it really hard for the layperson to make any sense of it at all. So the new guide is certainly a lot more broad in its recommendations. However, this might make it a lot harder for us to inform public policy, like healthy school programs or hospital meals.
Number three, there is no discussion of body positivity and diet culture. Yes, I love that the new guide has finally touched on mindful eating, but this is a very complex topic and I really don't think that we can dive deep into it without first addressing body positivity and diet culture. I mean, it is absolutely impossible to encourage or teach anybody to try to eat mindfully when they're fully engrossed in diet culture. Number four, it lacks cultural relevance. Okay, so where is my bok choy at? Health Canada, you need to take a look at our demographic. We are made up of so many amazing, rich cultures, and we need a food guide that actually reflects that. Not to mention, the food guide is one of the first documents that are handed over to newcomers to Canada when they come here. And a guide like this likely will make very little sense to them. In the future, I hope that Health Canada will ditch its Eurocentric lens and include a diverse array of foods to help speak to a wide variety of cultures. Number five, it lacks accessibility. So past and current food guides have really failed to point out one of Canada's big epidemics, and that is food insecurity. This food guide encourages Canadians to eat seasonally, to cook more at home with family and friends, and to fill half their plate with fruits and vegetables. And that's great, but what about the 4 million Canadians who are shopping at food banks and not at farmer's markets? Seriously, one in eight Canadian households are struggling to get any food on their plate, never mind fill half of it with beautiful, colorful vegetables. And this food guide is really not taking that into consideration. And finally, let's talk nutrition. There seems to be a lack of direction on the types of foods in these categories. So since we no longer have food groups, a little more direction and distinction when it comes to these broad categories might be helpful for most Canadians. So for example, not all fruits and vegetables are nutritionally created equal. A potato, for example, I would say a potato would better fit in that grains category because it's starchier than let's say the spinach that is on your plate. Likewise, some fruit are obviously a lot higher in sugar than a lot of the vegetables that are on that side of the plate. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that any Anybody just fill their plate half only with fruit but with this food guide that seems totally fair game and finally I would love to see a little category for fats I mean where does avocado fit currently it's considered a fruit and vegetable but again I probably wouldn't recommend someone fill half of their plate with avocado three times a day I would love to see that carved out in a future guide to make it a little bit easier for Canadians to navigate so guys, I hope you found this critique of Canada's Food Guide helpful. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What do you want to see in a future reboot of the Canada's Food Guide? What would you like to see in your food guide if you're from another country? Please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.